Hello, brother. Sewing and crafting family, Angela Wolf here, brother brand ambassador. And do we have a fun show for you today? All right, first off, for those of you in the United States that had Thanksgiving, some of you cooked big meals, I just want to know, how did it turn out? You all know that my forte is not in the kitchen. That's why I sew. <laughs> I don't tend to do both. But I did have everyone over. Everyone is still living. Nobody ended up in the hospital with, like, uh, any food allergies or, I should say, <laughs> poisoning. Uh, I passed the test. But I will say that everyone told me to take the giblets out of the turkey. Did it again. I don't know. I'm just going to say it adds extra flavor. Or like my friend Patty from the Wolfpack says, burnt is a flavor. <laughs> We're going to leave it at that. So say hi, say where you're from. I am live. We are, I should say. Emily's with me. We are live streaming today, and we are on Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. And Emily Thompson has such a fun project for you. So welcome, Emily. How are you? I'm good. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. So did you cook last week? I did. We ended up staying here, uh, kind of a last-minute decision. So it was just the five of us. So we definitely did a simplified I did not cook a whole turkey. I just went with the store-bought turkey breast. That's what the kids want anyway. Um, and they really are all about the gravy. So anything they cook gravy on, they're good to go. <laughs> so. That's awesome. My nephews are all about uh, the sweet potatoes with the mushrooms. And then my niece was all about the desserts. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. So it was good. We had a nice little meal and then enough for leftovers a few times, but not too crazy where we're totally sick of it. So uh, yeah, so it was good and um, very relaxing. Excellent. So you have a really fun project for us, but before we get started, speaking of sewing, speaking of fashion design, you wear, you made that, I made this. We always end up wearing what we show everyone. And I love that because someone says, well, what does that look like when you're finished? I love your top. Thanks, yes. Yeah, so. Um, I saw my sister wearing a top like this several years ago, and um, I said, I can make that. So it has snap tape in the neckline, and then you can adjust the shape of the neck if you want it to be tighter or looser um, or sort of an off-the-shoulder look. And I, I create or hack this from one of the patterns from my shop, but I think any pattern that has like a drop shoulder because the shoulder you know goes down to here uh you just you know a few tweaks and adjust the neckline and yeah i have enjoyed wearing this so i have a few versions of it in fact i think i sewed this one on an it's so easy show a couple years ago so but it's fun and um yeah it's a good christmas sweatshirt it's really cute so speaking of christmas i think we're doing something christmasy today aren't we we are. I'm going to show you how to make a super easy Christmas stocking. And I have put um, in the comments, at least on Facebook, the um, link to where you can get this free template. But again, super simple. You can create your own stocking template or trace one that you have that you like or find one that you like um, better. There's tons of stockings out there to be had. This is not a huge stocking, so I would say it's probably more decorative than actually usable if you were going to fill it with things for your kids, but the result is really cute. And um, in the post that I have written about this, I've shown you several different ways to embellish the simple template that we start with. So today we're gonna add a little pom-pom trim to the top. The cutest one, I think, is a fur or a Sherpa top um, fold over, but I've been sewing with super messy fabric for the last couple days, so I just can't show you that uh, <laughs> part of it today because I just vacuumed, and um, yeah, so I've done two really messy projects in the last two days, so I can't go there anymore. Um, um, so by the way, I, is that pattern on your website? 
It is, yes. So, so if you, yep. Yeah, so the website is below and you can just search Christmas stocking or free stocking and it should come up. Um, I also have a paper piece stocking pattern where you make um, using English paper piecing um, quilting technique. And I love that one too, but that's definitely more involved um, than I wanted to do as well um, and go from there. So yes, so you can uh, grab this pattern or any, and you can, you know, use this sort of idea with any template that you have. So um, anyway, so I have my pom-poms. I have both two of the a main and two of the lining. So I have two cute little fabrics here that we're going to use. So four stockings are cut out to get started. Great. Uh, yeah, I see some people talking about itching noses. So yes, it's definitely if you. So I have to, I have to just share. We're going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit. So you know, the week between <laughs> Christmas and New Year's. We're not going to have live shows, but we will have shows for you. So Emily and I pre-recorded that show, and she I can't believe that you recovered so quickly because she'll show you a little hint at the end of the show of what you're going to see that week, but we made a big mess. I shouldn't did say make a big mess. To make a mess. <laughs> it was a big mess. I'm sure I'll still be finding um, fur pieces around. I do still feel like it's in my nose and in my eyes a little bit. It's probably just in the ear. I, I think I felt it over here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take too much to um, feel that. So, but this is an easy and not messy project. So I'm excited um, to sew this one with you today. So you um, will need to decide which of these you want to be your outer fabric and which of it which of these you want to be your inner fabric, but essentially we're going to put right sides together. All of a sudden it looked like I had two left feet and I didn't, or two left stockings. <laughs> you might be Wait making a second. I, cut, <laughs> I cut these out right. I know I did. Um, so you'll put your stockings together and I'm just going to put just a couple of clips to hold this in place while I sew around um not too many but i don't want to come apart so the one that you're going to use as your lining um and i'm going to put this in right now before i forget you are going to leave a opening in the pat in the fabric to turn your stocking after we've sewed the two pieces together so i like to mark that with pins to remind myself to stop and leave a hole and then start again. So I have that marked and just, I have regular white thread and a regular machine or a needle on my sewing machine, it's a universal one. And I'm going to sew around both stockings on the outer edge, not on the top to begin. And on this one, the lining, you wanna leave probably a four or five inch opening to turn because we're going to sew the stocking pieces together at the top. And that's when we'll add the fun pom-pom trim as well um, on there. So, and you can, um, again, on the, the um, tutorial that I wrote about this, I've given you four different ways to embellish your stocking and the pom-pom trim is just one of them. So if you're looking for other cute ideas, including embroidery, or fur, um, you should definitely check it out. And there's lots of inspiration on that page as well. And I think that tutorial is also shared in a video form on um, the Brother website as well. So you can find, I've used and reused this stocking tutorial because it's so versatile and you can do it so many ways. So it's been a fun one to share over the years in multiple places. Okay, so I'm I love this. By the way, and pom poms, Emily, if you didn't, if somebody would just popped in, pom poms are so in fashion right now. So when you show us how to sew that, it could be used at the bottom of jeans and other places too. So this can yes. be adapted to other things too. Yes, I actually, the second messy project I just made was I made um, embroidered fur and pom pom Christmas pillows. And mm. they turned out so, so cute. And then I put pom poms around the edge of the um, fur pillow as well, but they're big ones like this. So 
I've been sewing a lot with pom poms. These cute ones are a lot easier to sew with than the big ones were, but also, yeah, fun ideas and so many ways that you can use this sort of trim. So I left my hole, my opening, and now we're going around our stocking. I'm using the edge of my um, sewing foot for a seam allowance guide, but you wanna sew at least a quarter inch seam allowance on these stockings just to make sure that the seam holds. And if you wanna take a bigger seam allowance, you can, but there's really no need for a large seam allowance with this project because we're simply outlining the stocking shape and um, you know we're not trying to fit something exactly. So keep a nice um, medium size, but not too big seam allowance. Again, I like about a fourth inch, maybe a little bit larger, depending on if I'm going around the corner or something like that. So I'm not super exact. Um, and then again, make sure on the lining you've left the opening or turning. So we'll set that to the side. We still need to clip the corners before we turn it right side out because we have sewn around some curves in order to get a smooth shape. When we turn that, we need to make sure that we've clipped the seam allowance. Again, another reason to not take too big of a seam allowance because it will help your corners to be smoother if there's less fabric that it's pulling. So a nice That's a good tip, That's a good tip uh, on that too, Emily. Yeah. By the, the way, I see somebody asking um, just real quick, what machine are you using? Everyone's like, that is the quietest machine ever. So this is the Essence 5200 combo sewing and embroidery machine. And I love it because it's a great sewing machine and it also has the eight by 12 hoop for embroidery. So I'm able to create lots of fun and big embroidery designs um, using this machine. So I just was using it the other day with my pillows um, for both the embroidery and the sewing function. So it's great to be able to just transition back and forth so easily between the two. And if you're trying to save space, like I usually am on my work counter, then it's perfect for that. I'm always trying to brainstorm how I can get a bigger desk here, but so far <laughs> I haven't really come up with anything. Wait, by the way, speaking of big, Phyllis wants to know how big, how tall is that tree behind you? Uh, it's about 11 feet. Wow. So we um, normally don't put our Christmas tree in this room of the house. We have had it down like in our family room, but that has normal ceilings. So we decided this year that we were going to try it up in this part of the house that has tall ceilings to get a bigger tree because we cut our tree you can get a permit to cut it in one of the national forests around here and it's super cheap. Um, but they also are mm, very interesting trees. They haven't been trimmed. They're very wild. Uh, definitely had some like Charlie Brown type trees. So when we get the, the normal eight foot or whatever, we can't even put all of our ornaments on it because the branches are <laughs> kind of weak and saggy. So we thought if we get a bigger tree, we can, we did fit all of our ornaments on it this year. So I don't know if we'll do it again. Might be a one-off, but it's been fun. <laughs> so are you clipping? What are you doing right now? Yep. So I am clipping the corners. I won't clip the whole um, edge of the stocking, but I did this little bit that is curved. And then I'll do a little bit on the heel. And I'm using these um, spring-loaded scissors just because they are easy on my hand and they're nice and sharp. I noticed my other ones were not sharp enough to clip with the tips. So um, you do want to make sure you do not clip your stitches. And if you accidentally do, you want to make sure you go back and um, reinforce that before you um, put this together. So speaking of clipping, I... Um, was putting new lights around some greens that we have over on the banister. And I had re wrapped it two times to make sure that it was distributed evenly. The first time I didn't like how it was. So I'd unwrapped it and I'd wrapped it again. Then I had zip tied it 
<laughs> all the way around our banister <laughs> on the railing. And then I was cutting the ends of the zip ties with oh. very sharp scissors. And on the last zip tie, I cut the lights. Oh. And they all that, went out. <laughs> that's terrible. So I had, my daughter was like, what just happened? So I said, oh, I cut the lights on the last tie. Oh. Um, so I had to go out and buy new lights and then unwrap it all and then wrap it again <laughs> and then be very, very careful. This is a much easier fix if you accidentally clip your stitches. <laughs> much better yes. than cutting the end of your lights off. Yeah, that could be bad. So thank, I was thankful it didn't like shock me or anything. It just went zip right through one of the wires and half the lights went out. So that was not good. But they were sharp scissors. So by the way, while you're cutting that, I have to ask all of the Brothers Sewing family here, did anybody take advantage of the really good deals last week from the Brother Dealers? Because I showed an unboxing of the new Scan and Cut with the rotary blade, and I know a lot of people were on that list that were like, whoa. So I'd love to see it in the comments. I see Cindy says her neighbor, oh, just bought the machine you have there. Oh, fun. Yeah, this is a great one. Really great one. Okay, so now we have our two pieces and they are clipped on the edges. And so you want to turn um, one right side out. I'm trying to think through this. It doesn't really matter because we're going to flip it again. Um, but we want to put essentially the right sides together of the stocking. So this one is going to go inside the other one. And this is, I'm actually doing it right. Um, the lining, it's probably best if you leave the lining turned wrong side out so that we can access the hole easily. If you do it with this one and then shove it inside, it gets a little bit trickier to pull that back through. So I'm going to put this stocking inside the other one. And before I do, I want to make sure that when I put it inside, the toes are lined up and the seams, because we're going to line up those seams, are also lined up. So with right sides together, we're going to align the side seams um, on both sides here of the stocking. Okay, now I'm going to go back and add the pom pom, but I'm just getting this organized first. So here is how we will turn the stocking right side out when we're all finished. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put this pom pom trim in between these two layers here, which I see that I need to tip this down a little bit. Okay, so we will stick the pom pom trim between these two layers and then um, sew it up. So if you want to, you can baste the trim to, I would probably baste it, <clears throat> excuse me, on the main fabric. But if you also, this is just thin, you know, quilting cotton. So it's not super hard to do this. Oh, the other thing that I need to do is while I'm sewing this, I want to make sure we add a hanging um, loop. So oh, yeah. let's grab one of those um, and we will add that um, to this before we sew. So oh, I'm just going to cut a little strip of fabric. Well, I'm sorry, Angela, did you something? Yeah, Arnell just had a question, like just when you start sewing again, if you've got a second, she wanted to know if it was, you had mentioned you were doing embroidery on faux fur, which faux fur, faux fur at the top of this stocking would be really cute too. And you mentioned that's on your website. Uh, was it tricky so to do? Okay, so I'm currently writing the tutorial for the fur pillows that I sewed. And I ended up kind of doing a cheater method because... <laughs> In my, I originally hooped the fur and put it in and then realized, because it's pretty long fur, it was not going to work at all. It uh, got too caught up in the embroidery foot. 
Um, so I ended up embroidering the words that I wanted on a piece of mesh and two layers of stabilizer and then cutting it out and then sewing it onto my fur and it actually looks amazing. Oh. Then I did a little research and realized you can't embroider right on fur. Um, and the suggested method is to put stabilizer on the top and the bottom and then embroider and then tear it away. Have you ever tried that, Angela? I've never tried it, but that's what I was finding when I was trying to, to actually research the proper way to do it. Yeah, you know, and also when you put the, the stabilizer on the top, number one, your foot won't get mixed yeah. up in there. The needle doesn't get mixed up. It kind of protects that fabric. I actually do that on a lot of things, not just faux fur, just to yeah. keep, if I have a lot of layers, anything like yes. that. Yes. So I think that's the proper way, but um, actually my pillows turned out super cute doing it not the right way. Um, actually, I think your way sounds great. It's almost like an applique, which would be perfect. Yeah. And I was able to then when I was sewing it on, you know, keep the fur spread apart with my fingers. So it's pretty nice and clear on there. Um, and I didn't have to tear away any stabilizer. But I think either way would work. Um, my tutorial will include the way that I did it, uh, but I'm also going to mention the suggestion of stabilizer. And just in the moment, I don't know why I didn't think about that, but I didn't. And so it didn't. I think those are the crazy. best. Those are the best learning opportunities when you try it yourself and then you're like, is there a better way to do this? Or did I just figure out a better way? <laughs> exactly. way okay. So now the challenge is to sandwich the pom-poms between two layers of fabric here and keep, which is not, is not difficult. These are nice little pom-poms and I'm going to use lots of clips. And then you also want to make sure that the trim does not get twisted and that you're keeping the pom-poms out of the way while you are clipping so that they should be facing down towards the main part of your stocking so that when we sew it and turn it right side out, they're at the very top and then we're gonna fold over a cuff on this stocking, which is the cute part of the stocking is it has a fold over cuff. So anything that you put in the liner we actually see a little bit of it on the top, which is why you need to have cute fabric on both the inside and the outside because you're going to see it. So when I've done the fur, I have actually not done the whole lining in fur, which you could, but I just sewed a little bit on the top. And then when you fold it over, you saw that cuff. So um, I think I was using scraps of some Sherpa fabric, and that's why I didn't have enough to do the whole. But a, a fur line stocking would also be delightful. So you could do that for sure. All right. So when I get back all the way around, I'm going to overlap um, a little bit where I started, about one pom pom length. So that that is full circle of pom poms around the top of the stocking, keeping them out of the way, and then clip on that overlap. Okay, so now before I sew, the last thing, actually, I did not put the hanger in. Okay, yep, I'm remembering this now. Because we're going to fold this over, I don't want my hanger down here. I actually want my hanger up here. So I will fold it and then tack the um, hanging piece on. Okay, so another tip when I'm sewing decorative trim like this, I will often put on my zipper foot because it just gives you less foot to try and avoid the decoration that you are sewing. So That's a good idea. Um, I will use this foot and then it's just more narrow on this side and is easier to avoid the palms, okay? So I, you also can feel this strip is, um, you know, a little bit thicker. So you can feel that when you're sewing and that will help you, hopefully, it helps me to um, keep sewing on that red fabric and making sure that I'm tacking these into the, um, 
want to make sure it's all lined up into the seam. You can also open up your fabric and double check. And then you're also with your fingers going to make sure that you are keeping the pom poms out of the way so that they don't actually get stitched accidentally into the seam as well. And I, and I've done that. So you, and you have to go back and cut those <laughs> threads and um, pull the pom pom out of the seam. Um, and depending on how far the pom poms hang down from your, um, you know, binding piece makes it easier or harder. When I was doing the big pom poms, you know, they were almost an inch. So that bulk was all right along um, the edge of what I was trying to sew. So that was definitely a new experience trying to sew with something that big. These small ones are much, much easier. But again, so Emily, slow. a couple of people are just mentioning that couldn't uh, that they would rather baste that together first onto one, which they could totally do that. Yes, you totally could do that. The thing that I found is I still have to make sure that I'm catching. I'm trying to think what what do you call, what would you call this this part that's joining the pom poms uh, together? Like a almost like a ribbon. Yeah, you still have to make sure you're catching this in your seam because I don't really want to see all of this. So for me, it doesn't really save a whole lot of uh, trouble because I'm still um, trying to make sure that I'm catching all the layers when I'm sewing. It's not like I can just sew the fabric and forget the trim. So, but definitely... Um, you could sew it in two steps, just like a zipper, you know, or something like that, where sometimes you base it and sometimes you don't. Um, totally up to you um, on this step. So what I'm going to check right now before I turn this, and I can see this between my layers of fabric, is that I have caught that red ribbon all the way around and all the way around pretty equally, right? Because I don't want it to be uneven. So once I've confirmed that yes, I can see about the same amount <clears throat> all the way around. Then we're gonna use our hole that we left to turn the stocking right side out. And you can see the cute little pom-pom trim right along there. And I'm trying to see here, I don't love where I joined, you know, where I joined my circle can't tell if I can just cut that or I need to go back and sew it a little bit. There's a little bit sticking out. I might just catch it in my top stitch actually, because I'm going to top stitch around the top of this pattern or top of this stocking to help hold the pom pom down. So I think I'll just leave it for now. And I think I can catch that there. So now that we have it opened up like this, we can go ahead and close the turning hole and then stuff the stocking inside each other. So you're just gonna fold in the seam allowance along this back edge. And I like to make sure that I've left this um, opening on one of the straight parts of the pattern because it's much harder to do this on a curve than it is just on the straight back. That is where it's um, really easy to just go ahead and close the opening and not have to fiddle with any of the curved parts. So you could stitch the whole thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch the few inches that I left the opening. Again, this is on the inside of the stocking. You're not gonna see it, but we don't want a hole there for any goodies or treasures to get lost inside the stocking. <laughs> Be like, Merry Christmas, here's a puzzle. Figure <laughs> out where your presents are. <laughs> okay, so then this is the outside, remember, and this is the inside. So now we're going to stuff the stockings inside each other. And then you could also, um, definitely an iron would be a good idea before you hang this, but smooth the pieces together and it's big enough to stick your hand in and kind of go around the toe and the heel and then pull it out 
And there is. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is really, really cute. The first step. So like I mentioned, I'm just gonna quick um, top stitch along this edge. And so I will put my zipper foot back in. And I'm trying to think now which side I want it on. <laughs> the smaller edge and I'm going to just lengthen my stitch a tiny bit and then we'll just top stitch and this will help keep the pom-pom edge um, down. It will help the top of the pattern to or the stocking um, just to lay nicely and then we'll get to fold it over and this is also where you need to watch the pom-poms because sometimes they will um, vibrate themselves right into the stitches, which we don't really want. I'm top stitching on the lining. I don't know if you can see that, but because when I fold it over, that's actually what you're going to see. So um, normally I would top stitch. So I was looking at the right side of the fabric, but in this case, this is going to be the right side of the fabric when I turn the stocking cuff over. So I'm actually stitching on the inside of the stocking for now. Okay, so now we've top stitched that. And then you want to fold over your cuff. And you have a little bit of creative discretion on how tall you want your cuff. I usually do it a couple inches like this, which you can see would be perfect if you had added embroidery right here and then you flip it over and you have like a name or Merry Christmas or whatever embroidered um, right on there. But this I think makes pretty good proportions. Um, but again, you can do a narrower or a wider cuff as you want. So the last step is then to tack your hanging hook right here on the edge, which will also keep the cuff in place. So I, I'm gonna trim a little bit of this. Got a little bit long. And you can use a zigzag or a regular stitch, um, whatever you want. I am going to pin it in place and then lift up the fold so that when I sew it, you don't see it on the outside of the fabric, right? You're just gonna see it on, it'll just be on the inside. So I'm gonna switch my foot back again because I'll probably zigzag this on. Emily, how wide of a strip did you use for that little hanger? Oh, I just totally winged it. Um, it was probably like an inch and a half and then I sewed down both sides and turned it right side out. So okay. you could also use ribbon or bias tape um, or things like that that are probably easier. Um, but yeah, you're just making a little hanger. You can make it a little bit wider. I think the ones I have hanging um, that I've made us, which is not, is the, is a larger stocking than this. Um, I went a little bit wider. Okay. So once you've sewn that in, then you can turn it again. And oh my gosh, that's so cute. I sew down about a half inch from where I'm actually doing the fold but you can adjust your fold again. And there is your cute little stocking. And I love making these in different fabrics that all coordinate together. You know, some could have this on the outside, some have this on the outside. In fact, this fabric line had like five different fabrics that all kind of went together. So really fun to sew with and each one could be embellished the same or differently, but there are so many options for making these stockings unique and beautiful at the same time. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Everybody's saying adorable. <laughs> of course, I'm gonna have to add it. So stinking cute. That is absolutely adorable. And I love the idea because if you go to the stores right now and you find the fabric, they always have like four or five that go together. I love the idea of gathering those and mixing things up a little bit. Actually, the year that I bought these coordinating fabrics because um, I used it from our tree skirt and the stockings that I sewed for us. Um, I bought it after Christmas when it was on sale. 
and then saved it till the next year. And then so, cause I knew I was like wanting to do new, new tree skirt and new stockings for us, but I wasn't, you know, I think about it this time of year and then I don't have time to sew five stockings in a tree skirt the first week in December. So I planned <laughs> ahead and I bought my fabric after Christmas. And then I like wrote it on the calendar in October. So stockings. And so it took me a couple of years to do it, but I was really happy with the process in the end. <laughs> that's cute. And I could definitely see adding embroidery or applique with the names. Yeah. I just, that's really cute. Yep. So uh, my tutorial has all the tips for doing that with um, embroidery or making this, yeah, a fur cuff or different, um, you know, texture fabrics that you fold over, but lots of really fun ideas. And I'll put your website down below. There are a couple other questions for you. Yeah. This one's kind of not related, but it is related to sewing. <laughs> uh, by the way, do you still use your smaller brother machine and have your kids started sewing yet? So, yes. And yes, I did have my smaller machine out um, recently because I was using it to sew, uh, to do embroidery with the new um, Disney designs for the new Disney movie Encanto that came out. So mm -hmm. I was using those designs and they're for the smaller hoop. So that was a really fun project that I was working on for the brother blog. And so I used, um, had my machine out for that. And my kids do like to sew, but they go in streaks of either wanting to sew at times where I cannot help them or <laughs> being totally disinterested. But I've had Rose do several times where I draw lines on paper, both straight and curved and, you know, zigzag. And then I have her just practice sewing on the paper because that's really all she doesn't really need to have anything that she can make right now. Um, but so she likes practicing like that and they love watching when I'm embroidering something, they'll just sit and like stare at the needle going back and forth. <laughs> and this weekend she learned how to cross stitch hand sew. Oh. So she's been cross stitching. Oh, um, I don't think she can follow like a pattern yet, but she can definitely like go in rows and her stitches are pretty neat. So yeah, she's having Very fun with cool. it. Great question on that. <laughs> oh gosh. And by the way, I saw, I saw many of you say that you bought the scan and cut and you a couple of people got new machines, and I think Cindy said her whole block is a brother block. Wow. Oh. We're, we're gonna... <laughs> I'm jealous of the new scan and cut. I will have to look into that. <laughs> oh, the rotary blade is amazing. Amazing. It looks incredible. Oh, so Emily, this was such a fun project. Before you go, do you happen to have your project that they're to give a little preview of what they're yes. going to see? So mark yes, your calendar you. Tuesday before New Year's. At 12 o'clock will be Emily showing this really fun project. So super messy, made a huge mess. I'm going to try not to destroy, need the vacuum again. But we sewed this really cute hooded cape out of this Buffalo check and Sherpa fabric that is so cozy and so cute. And you are going to love how easy it goes together. It's so cute. And by the way, she did this entire project beginning to end, cutting to sewing, all in under 45 minutes. So yeah. you are not going to want to miss that. So mark your calendar. That will be the Tuesday before New Year's at noon. And we'll look forward to seeing you then, too. But Emily, yeah. great project. We always love what you're working on. And I think this stocking idea is a quick and easy project. I put your website below so you all can Yay. see that. And also... Uh, Instagram is above and don't forget to tag brother. They love to see what you're working on. Yeah. Tag brother sews, hashtag brother sews, and hashtag scan and cut. <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody's saying thank you. Emily, I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you. Looking, looking forward to jumping over to your blog. You know, I asked you a silly question about cooking. When I go to your Facebook page, you have a ton of cooking things on there. I should have gone there for resources. <laughs> <laughs> I do sometimes. So my sister usually does all the posting for me. She's one of my assistants. And so she'll find most of those things. But I have um, several friends who do have more cooking on their sites. And so, you know, I'm trying to find a way to incorporate that. I've sewed less, showed less and less recipes on my site over the years. Um, but I still have them up there, you know, so it's always there. Might be a good resource for the upcoming holidays. Yes. <laughs> All right. Appetizer. Well, 
<laughs> yes, definitely. I can handle those usually. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, and I want to remind you all, I have Brother Sews down here too. They have new blog posts all the time. So be sure to go there, find your free design of the month. And on Thursday, we have Colleen and she's going to be showing how to make a hidden pocket scarf. Something oh, great so for when the weather gets chilly. So everyone, thank you so much for watching, Emily. It's great to see you. Brother, thank you for letting thank us you. take over your page. And I can't wait to make those stockings. Bye. Sounds fun.